Welcome to DJN TV and Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. Now introducing the one and only Ben Stowe. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Hey, we are back for another Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. This is the show that you've always wanted to be able to experience. You've always thought, what is my life missing? Well, tonight we're going to be able to take care of all those little, little cravings you've had with the Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe show. Good evening, Ben. Uh, why not? Yes, it's going to be <laughs> fabulous. Fantastic, because we're going to dive into a topic in which so many people have questions about. Probably one of the top, certainly in the top five questions ever asked on a, a DJ uh, Facebook group is, is dealing with wireless microphones. And it might even be like the top one or two questions is, is revolving around wireless microphones. You are correct. And, and I asked Ben to, to put together some tips. So we can be, be, have more consistent results and be more successful with wireless microphones. Well, I think if we... Chills, chills, just chills. <laughs> Already? I, 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 I just, just, the, just, you know, the, the anticipation. It's, it's kind of oh, like the ketchup. yourself, John. It's like the Some ketchup the bottle. I'm just... I'm just... water or something. <laughs> You know, when's that we'll ketchup going to go? Go take a cold shower. <laughs> oh, that's ice uh, cream for after the show, but that's another. <sighs> it's it's funny because I'm actually distracted because my youngest is actually is, is texting me right now about ice cream, and that is uh, that's creating a lot of. Your uh, youngest is a good child. To not think about that at the moment. Uh, she's, I think she's my favorite youngest child of yours. I'm just going to say that aloud. Uh. I think when we think about wireless and we think about being successful with it, there's there's a lot of subtopics here. We could talk about, you know, audio quality. We could talk about all these other things. But I think if we really were to say, what's the number one grind that people have with wireless? It's it's dropouts. You know, it's when it doesn't work, right? Uh, so, so that's really, I think, the direction I want to go with this when we have success with wireless is to say, how do I keep it from dropping out? Mm -hmm. And probably the most frustrating thing about wireless for people is that it's invisible. You can't see it. So you can't see why it dropped out. You can't see that it went away or you can't see that something else, you know, got in the way of it. And, and that summarizes the two, two number one reasons, the top two reasons, top two reasons. That seemed awkward as I said it out loud. Anyway, there's, there's basically two reasons that a wireless mic drops out interference or attenuation which means reduction of the signal. And within that, there's five uh, little categories here, we'll call them. Uh, so um, let me do this. Let me just pop open this PowerPoint because I, I think we're just gonna get right into it and probably in some reasonable sense of an order, but uh, you might be along for a ride. So we'll see. I'm going to do while you're doing that. Uh, shout out to Sean. Sean, we are live. This is uh, coming to you Tuesday night here at 8.33 Central Time, 8.34 Central Time. We need to have a newspaper or something for like proof of life. <laughs> yeah, exactly, know? exactly. Well, you know, they'll say something in the chat. Like I see Gus is there with us tonight and Robin and Arturo. I mean, we got a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks coming in here because everybody's excited about wireless mic night. <sighs> well, let's, let's, uh, let's give the people what they want, John. So what am one, I looking uh, at? We are looking at, this is a, uh, and this is an old one, but uh, this is a channel listing for TV stations in the Dallas market, basically. Uh, and this is showing us within a proximity of where we're going to be using the wireless mic, uh, what stations there are, what their transmission power is. Uh, and you can even get these on a map with like a kind of an azimuth that shows the direction they are from you. Um, and ultimately, and I think uh, maybe this graphic here, uh, yeah, here we go. So this is a good one. So here, this is in the uh, St. Louis area. Now we're seeing uh, kind of an overlay of a TV station uh, and its signal area. And you might already be thinking, why in the world are we talking about TV stations? And the answer is because for most wireless mic users, that's the spectrum that we use. We are sharing the spectrum with the TV stations uh, and we are essentially guests where they are not. Mm. So we, we use the gaps where there aren't TV stations, uh, white space, they call it. Um, the, the, the reason that that works is because we have to go where they're not. So if we go where they are, we're going to lose. 
Uh, and so the number one cause of, of um, you know, interference is, uh, is TV stations. Uh, and the good news is we know where they are and we can avoid them. Um, now, there are other causes for interference, certainly. Uh, and that would be uh, a lot of things. Um, let me just uh, kind of pop through this. Uh, ben, these but while lines. you're on that one, just can, can you, the, the, that little uh, informational uh, part right there in the middle there, that mm -hmm. is saying that the, the, power that that station is broadcasting at is a thousand kilowatts. kilowatts. Okay. Yeah. A thousand kilowatts. And just to put that in perspective for our microphones, a really good microphone that we would use an RE3 or the Sennheiser G4 series, how many hundreds of kilowatts are we producing with that? We, we can go up to 50 milliwatts, which is a one thousandth of a watt. So this is a thousand thousand watts. Uh, so I guess to, uh, to illustrate the point, if I was to show you a bar graph of the two on the screen and a thousand kilowatts filled the entire screen, you wouldn't even see the other one on the screen. And that, that, that really becomes a big reason why we lose that battle if we're in the same, in the same frequency area. No doubt. We're certainly uh, not going to overpower a TV station, not even close. Uh, we're going to lose that battle every time. Now, where this becomes confusing for people is if we get out here into some of these, uh, you know, areas where the signal might be fairly low, our mic might work intermittently mm. because we might be winning that battle at short distance. And then when we get a certain distance and mind you, that inverse square law, that sort of thing kind of applies here with radio waves as well. So if we, uh, you know, get twice the distance away from our receiver, we've lost four times the power basically. So, uh, you know, we could lose that battle fairly quickly where, you know, in certain places it could work and in certain places it won't work and we don't know why. And that's interference. We're, we're simply losing the battle to a more powerful uh, signal. And you can see here where, you know, the terrain certainly affects the uh, strength of the TV station. Now, right. I want everybody to remember this because we talk about line of sight and we're gonna talk about it later. Line of sight's a thing for TV stations too. So, uh, you know, keep in mind here, you know, if that tower is high and you're within the line of sight, you're going to get better TV. That's why people put their TV antennas on their roof, mm -hmm. you know, those of you that are using over the air TV. So, uh, kind of the same rules apply to all of this. Uh, but this is to illustrate, of course, that, uh, and this is just one TV station. You know, all these green dots are TV stations, and I'm just modeling this one. Sure. And from where I'm going to be using my wireless mic, it's 13.7 miles away. Uh, we can see the direction it is, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, there, like I said, I mentioned that azimuth. Uh, but uh, so how do we know where these things are? Well, um, you know, one, when we sell wireless mics to our customers, we research their market for them. Uh, we have access to data like this. Uh, everybody does. It's just not presented in a very friendly format. So we, we take care of the hard part and, and we get you a band that has the most options. That doesn't mean... There will be no TV stations in what we sell you. That's when your mic will have, you know, a scan function or something like that. And we'll get into, you know, uh, various ways to avoid that interference within the system. One way that's not very common for DJs uh, would be to analyze, uh, you know, simply to scan the spectrum. Uh, and this is what your wireless mic is basically doing for you. Um, uh, but this would be uh, a software-based solution, or there are, you know, handheld analyzers and things where we can get a picture of what the spectrum is is doing. Uh, and and one of the really neat things about what's on the screen here is, here we can see the peaks of you know these things that exist in the spectrum, and down here we can see the waterfall. So we can see that some things kind of come and go. Uh, and why that's meaningful is when you scan on your wireless mic, it's just taking a quick snapshot of what's there at that moment. Uh, so anything that's coming and going isn't really going to be seen by that scan unless it happens to be there when the scan goes by. Sure. Mm -hmm. So anyway, not very common for, for uh, DJs to have to use an RF analyzer, but uh, it, it, it sometimes, you know. So then is the waterfall down below, is that showing what's going on over a, a short period of time? Correct. Yep. So every time a trace goes by, it adds a line to the waterfall. So okay. this is kind of the, you know, it's built one line at a time. So that might represent several minutes worth of data mm -hmm. that we see there or even longer, you know. So then we, as we were looking at this around that 638, uh, there's definitely something that's uh, that that is there to be avoiding. Yeah. These things are kind of coming and going and, and uh, 
you know, in this case, it may have been, uh, I don't remember, this might have been from a, a, a football game or a concert or something where I was monitoring wireless. It may have just been something I did to uh, create this chart. Mm. I, I don't remember. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've collected a lot of these sorts of things over the years, and you'll notice this one actually goes up to uh, 690 megahertz. Uh, so this would predate the 600 megahertz auction. But anyway, uh, doesn't really matter. Nothing's, nothing's changed other than the frequencies that we operate in. Uh, the fundamentals of how it propagates are still the same. So, uh, And then uh, what we can do is we can coordinate things. Now, what's really cool about your wireless mics is if you're using wireless mics that are in the same band and of the same model uh, from the same manufacturer, their group and channel assignments and things that are in there are already pre-coordinated. Uh, you can use these different channels within a group together uh, and, and they've already figured out what frequencies will work. When we have lots of different wireless from different manufacturers and different bands, and you know, we don't have control of that whole ecosystem, then we have to coordinate these things, which is uh, you know, some of the things that we do for concerts and some of the things that we've helped uh, uh, football teams and things with in the past. Sure. So you know, here this is, uh, this software is doing these calculations. And then here's an example from a, a national championship football game where, um, and again, you can see this one's a little old because it's got some stuff up in the up in the higher 600s, but this is where we assign these frequencies. Nobody's doing any scans here. We, we're doling these frequencies out and we're saying, this is what you get, you know? So uh, use this frequency and then we'll have uh, backups. You know, you can see uh, some spares on here, I think. Uh, I can't tell if it's, uh, nah, maybe not designated on this sheet, but anyway, uh, you know, we'll have primaries and spares for people, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now the moral of the story is uh, one of the reasons we would want to do that is to avoid what's called intermod. And uh, we talked about TV stations and now you, you could say, well, okay, obviously I want to avoid, you know, I don't want two mics operating at 507.050. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, I don't want two mics operating on the same frequency, but what can also happen is creating harmonic frequencies, um, you know, particularly with uh, uh, high power analog wireless mics uh, and even some digital uh, wireless mics uh, where we can have two frequencies that are not interfering with each other, but they're now creating third, fifth, seventh order harmonics, which are creating uh, frequencies that might interfere with other wireless we might want to use. Uh -huh. So we can't really just go about this willy nilly. And I'm sort of rushing through this because, uh, you know, Intermod is a, a pretty tough topic to talk about. Uh, I mean, we could we could use all of our allotted time to talk about it. And that's one of the reasons we use software to do it. It's fairly complicated to calculate sure. it, uh, particularly as we start wargaming lots of frequencies against each other. Uh, but anyway, I guess the moral of the story is sometimes the interference comes from us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are the problem. Uh, other times that interference comes from other gear in our rack, bad power supplies or, you know, lifted grounds on cables or something like that. You know, there's all kinds of ways that we can actually create interference. And uh, sometimes I've had uh, I've, I've walked people through various troubleshooting things, which involves turning off their other gear. You sure. know, let's let's see where that problem is at, you know. Uh, this is another one. And when I have customers that scan and they say, I've got no frequencies available, why am I getting nothing showing on my scan? There's a few things that we'll check, but one of the first questions I ask them is, do you have a video wall? Or is there a video wall at the event? Uh, and one of the reasons is uh, there are a lot of these, uh, we'll call them generic or no name uh, products that come from Asia. And uh, everybody likes a good deal, but I'll tell you what, they'll give you any price you want. They'll just keep taking stuff out to get to the price you want, you mm -hmm. know? And one of the first things that goes is good shielding and good power supplies and good uh, drivers in these LED panels. So here we can see the difference where uh, this was the environment I measured with nothing turned on. This is when I turned on one name brand panel and we can see there's essentially no change. And then I turned on this generic Chinese panel I was testing and you can see, holy buckets, I got all these you know, emissions start popping up all over the place. And that's just one panel. So if I have a whole video wall with lots of panels, I, I, I very well could render my wireless mics or in-ears or IFBs useless uh, because of the emissions from that, that poorly uh, constructed panel. So just take a, just a shoot a shot of how far of a range would that interfere with microphones? Is it a 50 feet within 10 feet of the video wall? Would you figure that would interfere or how? Yeah, it can be 50 to 100 feet. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, you know, it depends on how bad it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
one of the one of the real problems is video walls very often are in very close proximity to the stage exactly. so they're very often well within 50 feet uh and i've definitely seen scenarios where they simply don't coexist wow you know uh you know where they'll shut the video wall off and suddenly they have all kinds of space they can use for their wireless uh you know and and, and again frustrating because it's invisible and you can't see it but mm -hmm. this is one of those things where uh you know cheap products um cheaply made products uh, products that don't have good shielding, uh, don't have, uh, you know, FCC uh, approvals, that sort of thing. I mean, stuff that we're kind of backdooring into the country uh, that's skipping all kinds of regulatory things, they can be part of your problem, you know? They, I mean, and it's just physics. It's, you know, sure, it's cheaper. So why is it cheaper? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just a great deal. Maybe they took out some stuff that you need, you know? Right. Yeah. So anyway. Hmm. So here's an example of the intermod we talked about, where I talked about those third, fifth, uh, seventh order harmonics. So here we can see frequency 570.725 all by itself. Uh, here we can see 571.475 all by itself. And let me show you what happens now on the spectrum analyzer when I turn them both on at the same time. So that's where we can create our own problems just by tuning our wirelesses to frequencies that create intermod. And uh, of course, the more we do this, the more problem we could potentially make. So hmm. sometimes the interference comes from us. A couple different places we talked about. Let's talk about another place where the interference can be sort of self-imposed. Um, and uh, we talked a little bit on a show a few weeks ago about RF power. Uh, and yep. sometimes more power is not good. Yes. Because it, it increases the intermod component. And sometimes it can also inter, inter, increase the amount of reflections and things bouncing around. And that's essentially what's happening with multipath is. So we sort of imagine the wireless mic transmits like this, right? Mm -hmm. You know? That, Seems that, logical. That's not, yeah. Starts that's there, not goes really there. really what's happening. I'm sorry, John, say it again. It starts there and goes there. It, it seems perfectly logical. Yeah, yeah, and, and it does. That does happen. But, but what also happens is this. <laughs> and this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing, usually, because as people move around, as we turn the wireless, as, uh, you know, uh, people move throughout the room, there often isn't one single path directly back to our receiver. That's why we have two antennas and why we use diversity systems. We want to receive from two different paths in case one path gets blocked. However, what can happen with multipath is that a uh, basically a radio wave can bounce into itself or a reflection can bounce into another wave and, and it can essentially cause cancellation, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, at, at, you know, a certain amplitude out of phase uh, is going to cancel that signal and we're going to have a drop. Uh, and, and here again, the only problem was us, uh, oral and the combination of the room and the path to the mic and those sorts of things. But it was no outside TV station. It was no, you know, it was no any other mic in the space. It was simply our mic and a reflection of the radio signal from our mic uh, that caused that. So... Uh, so then reflecting back to our show we did where we talked about uh, Mike, the transmitters in Mike with a low power and high power, would the high power then give me more of that signal bouncing around? Absolutely. Absolutely. So now again, there's no hard and fast answer, which is better or, you know, they mm -hmm. wouldn't have options. Uh, you know, some mics have up to, you know, three or four or five power settings. Uh, I think the general rule for me is to use the lowest power possible. Uh, but of course that's going to be a really excellent segue into attenuation when we don't have enough power. So sometimes we need more power. Um, and, and, and by the way, I just assembled this PowerPoint, uh, right before, uh, the, uh, the show here. And I don't remember the order the slides are in. So it's kind of like Christmas. It's exciting for all of us. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> like when my kids open their present, I'm as surprised as they are. Cause I don't know what my wife got them from us, you know? <laughs> So anyway, seems like a great time to talk about antennas. It would be. Uh, so there are four different types of antennas shown on the screen here. Uh, going from left to right, we have a quarter wave or the small antenna that typically ships with most wireless systems. Some systems do ship with the next one to the right, which is a half wave. And you'll notice it's twice as long. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Half wave is twice as long as a quarter wave. Uh, and this has more reception power. Uh, shameless plug, if you want to see a really cool video where we tested with three different types of antennas and measured the distance, 
Uh, you can hop over to YouTube, go to the NLFX Pro channel, and you can check out that video. I think it's called Do Antennas Matter or something like that. But anyway, for now, stay tuned here to DJN TV, and I'll tell you about it. Uh, so quarter wave uh, and then the half wave. Another notable difference with a half wave over a quarter wave is the half wave can be remotely mounted, whereas a quarter wave is a monopole and it can't. Uh, here again, we're covering a lot of information in 30 minutes, so I'm going to gloss over some things. Feel free to send me a message or to check out some of the other great videos we've done on this channel and on ours. Uh, but uh, basically, a quarter wave needs to be attached to the receiver or to the system in the rack. can't be remotely mounted where a half wave can be remotely mounted. So that's another key difference. Uh, and we'll talk about why that's so important in just a minute. I made a whole new slide just for tonight. Never <sighs> seen the light of day ever before today, and I'm really excited to show it to you. So stay uh -huh. tuned for that because, well, it's it's really awesome. It's, you just wait. It's gonna it's gonna blow you away, John. I, I I'm just sitting here completely a flutter. <laughs> well, you wait. Uh, and then the uh, next antenna in the middle, the uh, the big black weird looking shape there, uh, we call that a log periodic antenna or a log periodic array. And you'll notice the lines on it vertically. It is kind of an array of antennas on this device. Um, uh, often they are called, you know, paddles or shark fins or bat wings or whatever, you know, uh, you, you know, or bat fins or I don't know. Anyway, whatever you want to call it. And uh, these are a focused antenna. They're directional. You'll notice there's an arrow on here. We point that towards where the mic is. And these tend to have much higher gain, maybe plus 9 dB, which is really substantial mm. over a quarter wave. Uh, anyway, uh, a really great option. Uh, and one that I used almost all the time. And I'll explain why it's not all the time. Uh, and then to the right, one we really wouldn't use much in the DJ realm, but this is called a helical antenna. And we could get into some really cool stuff about the polarization of radio waves, but I don't think today is the day. So I uh, just wanted to show it because it's kind of neat. And people say, what is that thing? I saw it at a concert. Why do they have that? You know, more often we use these for in-ear monitor packs, that sort of thing. Mm, but okay. those are the four basic types of antennas we would use with wireless mics. I'm going to pause for a breath. I feel like you got a question. Yeah, that, that, that was what I was wondering is, is where it would be used. But if it's going to, if concerts are where it's used, that's what I was. Yeah, not, not super typical for DJ mics, uh, you know, expensive and difficult to transport and not really necessary. And, yeah. you know, not even all that beneficial in the grand scheme of things. I mean, so, it's not as pretty as the bat wing. Yeah, right. Exactly. So now we just talked about 9 db gain from the antenna uh this slide comes courtesy of our friends at sure mm -hmm. and uh i even put their logo on it for them look at that you're welcome sure yeah fancy uh so what we're talking about here erp typically is effective radiated power uh and here we're talking about effective received power because we're talking about the reception side using these antennas to receive the radio signal and you can see we've got kind of the symbology on the first line, and then we've got some numbers on the second line. So let's mm -hmm. just dive into it. Let's say that the the transmission power is received at, you know, this tiny fraction of a milliwatt. We talked about maybe sending at 50 milliwatt. Well, this is way below that, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, that, that power is going to attenuate over distance. Uh, and then we've got this directional antenna, which gives us 9 dB of gain. And uh, but let's say we ran uh, 50 feet of RG8X cable, so we lost 3 dB in the cable. So we have a, a, a net gain still of 6 dB. So we have a received power of minus 36 dBm. And you can see we've actually effectively received more power than we did. Uh, now, again, no way to make this simple in a 30 minute show, but this is where uh, having a higher gain antenna can be really beneficial sure. because it gives you more signal than than we would have got otherwise. Uh, now there's some real gotchas here though. One is we don't want to receive too much. Uh, we can overload the front end of our wireless and we can cause problems that way. Mm -hmm. That's where that low power is sometimes better than high power. Don't just blast away with the maximum amount of power you have with an active antenna with 12 dB of gain, you know, and inline boosters, because you're gonna basically cook your radio. You know, I mean, it only needs enough to be enough, you know, and there's meters on most of these radios. You can see the antenna, uh, you can see the signal strength, uh, you know, so don't overdo it, right? Um, and another thing to bear in mind is when we start adding active boosters and active antennas, we also increase the noise floor. So engineering is a series of compromises. 
So that's one reason I maybe wouldn't always use the shark fin all the time or the LPA, log periodic antenna, is it might be too much gain. I might sure. be too close. I told a story a couple shows ago where I was at a conference and they had the wireless mic rack literally sitting next to the stage where the presenters were. And then they had an LPA antenna on it and they had all these operating at 50 milliwatt and they were just blasting away. <laughs> And the mics kept dropping out. And they said, why are these dropping out? We've got an LPA and we've got max power. And I said, yeah, that's the problem. We got to dial it back here a little bit. Uh, so there are actually even attenuators that can be used at times in line. Very rare. Usually we're not doing that. But we, we want to keep that signal in the range that the mic wants to operate in. Sure. Again, I apologize for going through that so quick. Uh, but I guess the point is, this is complicated, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, good news viewers, uh, if you're a wireless mic user, which you probably are, unless you're just really curious and you're watching the show because you just got nothing else to do on a Tuesday night, uh, you know, we're here to help. A lot of videos on this channel, uh, but also feel free to reach out to me or my colleagues at NLFX. We know this stuff, we live with this stuff, we deal with this stuff, we're actually really good at this stuff and we're here to help you. Um, all right, so here's another reason I maybe, and this isn't the slide, we're just building up to that. I, I, uh, I'm still waiting. Just hang on for that. Uh, this is another reason that maybe I wouldn't use an LPA. Now, this is a very overly dramatized example, but I want to show you the differences. So with my, with my half wave dipole to the left, that is a radial pattern. So basically, it makes a donut shaped pattern around the stick. Point the stick up in the air in a donut shaped pattern around the stick, that's your reception, which coincidentally, uh, not coincidentally, is why we typically put them at 90 degrees or 45 degrees to the horizon, but 90 degrees from each other, because now we have crisscrossing donuts and we have the best chance of avoiding that multipath. So pro tip. Uh, so here is the reception for this antenna. And uh, you can see, and this is, again, dramatized, but you can see that the reception drops off with distance, which mm -hmm. it always will for any antenna. But this one is receiving in all directions, so it's a bit more diluted. Uh, so, you know, not maybe not great reception at the edge of the circle here. So what if we used our bat wing? Well, that would be better, right? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, probably, mm -hmm. but it depends. Bottoms up, everybody. Oh, there we go. It's say we got For those new to the show, yeah, it's apparently, I don't know, a decade ago, this was made into a drinking game, so I don't know how many livers we've killed. But anyway, so uh, let's uh, let's just talk about antennas. So here I've got my focused antenna. You can see that it, it maintains, uh, because it, it's picking up only in, in a certain direction, it maintains better reception in that direction. However, in this case, if it weren't aimed where the mic is, the reception is actually much worse. Hmm. So the reception in this case, in my dramatized example here, would be better from the dipole. Sure. Uh, now, simple solution. We have a couple of LPAs, and, you know, they really don't have this narrow of a beam either. It's more like 120 degrees, so okay. it's pretty wide. Uh, you know, but you don't want to be behind it. Uh, you know, go, go in the direction where the arrow shows you. And if we have a couple of them, we can cover a really big area. So this is, again, for the sake of illustration, but the point is engineering is a series of compromises and there's no one fits all solution. And all day long, I sit at my desk and people say, I have this mic and it drops out all the time and it sucks. So I should get this mic. And meanwhile, I got somebody else saying, I got this mic and it drops out all the time and it sucks. So I should get this mic. And I'm like, you guys, it's not, it's nothing magic. These are, these are just radios. You know, this mm -hmm. is technology as old as the Titanic, you know, now there's a lot of things under the hood and there's things that make pro radios, pro mics better than cheap ones. Right. So I'm just oversimplifying it, but I'm just saying it's not like sure sucks or Sennheiser sucks or whatever. No, they all make good stuff, uh, you know, in varying levels. It doesn't matter if you buy a pro touring system like Axiant and you don't use it properly, it's going to drop out all day long hmm. and it doesn't suck. You're just not using it right. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, now, I know that's really frustrating for people who are trying to do it right and they still have dropouts. I get it. And I'm not saying that you're not good at what you do, but I'm saying it's complicated, mm -hmm. you know, and it can be frustrating. And anyway, that's why this, knowing this stuff gives you a fighting chance. How about that? Nice. All right. And I got you. I'm in your corner. All right. So here we go. Here's the slide. I worked so hard on this. Whoa. 
I'm oh, amazed. No, it, no, 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 there's more. There's more. Oh, I was thinking, gosh, how am I going to fake excitement for that? I'm just, but anyway, go ahead. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so uh, what we can see here is uh, DJ Smiley Face. Yes. With, with the, uh, their uh, half-wave dipoles. Uh, and they are doing a test of their wireless before the event. And they're smiling because everything is going great. It's they're having no problems at all. Nice. But then all their smiley friends show up. And they get between the antennas, the transmit and the receive. And human bodies are basically giant walking bags of salt water. And we are we just soak up radio waves like you wouldn't believe. Humans are the problem. Now, granted, weddings would be pretty boring if you didn't have humans there. I mean, really, what's the point, yeah, right? But yeah, it is. Just saying, I mean, I could see why AI might want to kill us all off, you know? <laughs> but anyway, so, so we might as well have just put a brick wall between these two. And guess what? Now, it don't work. And he's not, he or she is not happy anymore. Yeah, our DJ is not happy anymore. No. So, line of sight, get your antennas up over the people, and you're happy again. Nice. I worked really hard on that slide. You I did. You know. uh, now, another great thing about LPA antennas, uh, when appropriate, which is most of the time, honestly, but when appropriate, uh, they mount on a mic stand. So it's very easy to get those up, you know, six, seven, eight feet in the air. Mm -hmm. But the key is line of sight. People say to me all the time, they say, well, everything was fine until 100 people showed up at the wedding with their cell phones. I just stop right there. Time out. I do events for 100,000 people. Could you imagine if 100,000 cell phones came into a building and they were actually a problem? Mm -hmm. They're not. That's not the problem. Could you imagine if before an NFL game or you know a, a concert or whatever, they said, okay, everybody, turn off your cell phone. You can't even get 150 people to turn it off on an airplane. Uh -huh. And they think their life might be in danger. <laughs> They're not doing it at a concert point is the cell phones are not the issue so it's not that the people showed up with their cell phones it's just that the people showed up <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not the phone it's you okay <laughs> yeah leave your phone and get out yeah uh you know no i mean but we just have to engineering right we just have to we now we understand the problem and we know what the workaround is you know now of course there could be other sources of interference that came in with them mm -hmm. uh they could be uh you know emissions from a photographer's flash it could be uh wireless mics for a videographer it could be could be a lot of things um and of course there's all kinds of other little gotchas that didn't make my list of five because these maybe you get filed under more of the more advanced tips, but sure. if the rubber has broken down on the coating of your lav pack and that metal is touching the officiant skin because they stuck it under a shirt, they might have decoupled the antenna. Now it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, it just takes a tiny hole. Uh, so anyway, all kinds of things. Yeah, I know radio waves are frustrating, right? But it's really cool to not have wires, so it's worth it. Um, now, something else is... You'd say, well, if I got lots and lots of mics, it's really hard to do this. So uh, how do I do that? Well, number one, you don't want a ton of antennas together anyway, because that's not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we, we can start to, again, create some more of our own problems by having lots of antennas in proximity, especially if those antennas are parallel to each other and blah, blah, blah. Don't do it. So what do we do? We can combine our antennas. Uh, and, and what we mean by that is we can stick with a single pair of antennas to preserve our diversity. Seen here is A and B. And we can connect up to four receivers in this particular antenna splitter. And we could actually do more because we can cascade. Uh, so mm. we could do even up to potentially 16 wireless mic systems with a single pair of antennas with this model of splitter. If you need to do more than that, we've got options for that too. Uh, you know, again, if you're putting this together a system with lots of wireless, you're gonna wanna talk to us anyway. Mm -hmm. Just get, just trust me on that. I've done events with hundreds of wirelesses. You, trust me, you're gonna wanna talk to us. Uh, and here's an example of how that would be wired. So, you know, if you don't want to oh. talk to us, uh, you can uh, kind of do it yourself. Uh, you know, sure hope you'd uh, uh, stop at our site and uh, pick up the products there. But if not, you can, you know, you can still do it this way. And, you know, as long as your conscience is clear, I hope you can live with yourself. But anyway, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, so here we can see how those A and B are preserved. I've color coded them red and blue. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that's how we would connect four receivers to a single pair of antennas. And there isn't any kind of a grounding wire because that is already included in that type of wire connection and that antenna. So we, yeah. we can put them, mount them remotely. Yeah, exactly. It's all, you're all set. Uh, you couldn't, you shouldn't do this with uh, quarter waves. You could do the quarter waves as long as they were mounted to this rack or mounted to the, to one of the rack ears for one mm -hmm. of these devices. You wouldn't want to stick quarter waves up in the air. Okay. You, you're going to want to go with a dipole or a LPA like your half waves or your, uh, you know, LPAs here at VC. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, oh, thus ends the, uh, the reading of the PowerPoint. So and we are uh, just, we are pretty much out of time also, so. Boy, time that good. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Well, interesting. So the moral of the story. Line of sight, line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Uh, that's, I mean, if you want to, if you want to boil it down to one thing, that's it. But again, line of sight doesn't matter if you're on top of a TV station. So two reasons wireless mics drop out interference or attenuation, which is the reduction of signal. And within that, there's a couple different reasons. We talked about, you know, where these forms of interference come from, can be us, can be a power supply in our rack, could be a TV station, you know, but whatever it is, we're going to lose that battle. We got to be where that problem is not. And attenuation, uh, you know, more often than not comes from, you know, really long uh, antenna cable or, uh, you know, poor antenna placement or, you know, lots of things, something getting in the way, blocking that signal, you know. Uh, I'm going to do one quick, uh, Shay had a question here to just put in there. Um, have a, has a two microphone system, which has two antenna, it claims to be true diversity. Um, but is wondering if a true diversity could be a system with two mics, but only two antennas, or would it need to have four antennas to be a, a two microphone system in true diversity? That's an excellent question. Uh, just like we looked at our antenna combining system, that system undoubtedly has antenna combining built into it. And uh, here again, as long as it's a reputable brand, as long as it's a brand we trust, you know, I mean, if you got it on, I don't know what the, you know, wish or whatever, you know, who knows, right? You know, so I can't, you can't say that everything is going to be just because it says true diversity doesn't mean it is. But certainly if it's something from one of the known brands, you know, sure, Sennheiser, EV, AKG, Audio Technica, you know, any of the known good brands, uh, if it says it's true diversity, it is true diversity. Uh, and so what you have inside that chassis is you have an antenna combining that is reducing the need from four antennas to two. And just like we saw with the antenna combining graphics, you know, that could be even more than that. There are units that have four wireless in a rack that only have two antennas. Uh, hmm. Sure, ULXD comes to mind uh, or Sennheiser EWDX comes to mind where there's only two antennas, uh, but true diversity is absolutely preserved, you know, in these, these pro level systems. Good stuff. Good. Great question. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Shay. And uh, thank you guys for being with us uh, tonight as we went through and talked about uh, wireless microphones. Again, Ben uh, mentioned, of course, uh, go to the YouTube channel, uh, NLFX Pro YouTube channel. Uh, there's some great uh, videos on on uh, wireless microphone things. There's this one really cool video where they sent this guy walking down the road to test how far oh, yeah. that you know that that's just, that was a good time. That was just a classic video that you every once in a while you <coughs> have to watch it and wonder, what, did he ever make it back? He, My favorite, though, is the antenna video. If you haven't seen that, it's worth a watch because we have Kaylin who works in accounting. Accounting people, you know, are necessary or we wouldn't be in business. Uh, but but she never gets to go be on videos. You know, she doesn't you know, they're not in marketing. They're not they're not really talking to people. You know, I mean, not not customers usually. I mean, they're anyway. And, 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 and she really I mean, she's great, by the way. She's really fantastic. Uh, you know, I've come to know her much better in the year or so since that video came out. And, and uh, you know, uh, she does have a good personality, but she is kind of just what you'd sort of expect from account an accountant. She kind of keeps to herself, kind of quiet, you know, whatever. And, and she's not at all acting in the video. When you watch the video, you're going to know what I mean. She's not at all acting. She is just absolutely being herself, and it is perfect. It's like, man, if you were to script an accountant in Hollywood, she's nailed it. So, <laughs> uh, funny. I'll have to go check that one. I don't think I've seen that one, so I'll have to go check yeah, that we, one. Yeah, we basically sent her on a walk, and she's reading one of her accounting books, uh, like, you know, I don't know, you know, cost basis accounting three or something. I don't know. She had recently graduated from college, uh, you know, and still had all of these massive textbooks in her office. And, you know, I'm just kind of like, are you kidding me with that? Because we're like, okay, so this is perfect. You know, yeah. you can just walk and we'll measure the distance while you read about, you know, business mm -hmm. law or something, you know, and anyway, and it, and it, I mean, none of that is staged, which is so funny to me. We literally just were like, who could we get to do this video? Let's have Kaylin do it. Go into her office and see this bookshelf of these, 
you know, business law oh, and accounting boy. books and like, Hey, grab one of those. Let's go for a walk. This will be great. Yeah. This will be, this will be stellar. Exciting. She thing. handled it really well. She I did. Uh, right. I mean, I think she kind of enjoyed her moment in the sun. Honestly, we may have to bring her back for another video. Yeah. So excellent. Well, thank you, Ben. Anyway, for... Go give it a watch. Go give Kaylin some props. Yeah. So that's out there again on YouTube. Uh, check out uh, search right now FX pro and that'll pop up and then of course if you go and check out uh, some of the other microphone videos we've done a lot over the years uh, you can go to our youtube Disc Jockey news youtube channel and then there's a playlist for tuesday night with ben stowe we've done like seven or eight shows i think this is our ninth so you'll you'll get to see all, all eight <laughs> how of many them. shows have we done I, for a while i know you were keeping track uh, we would I, I did for a while i counted them the other day and i think there was close to 400 now in there Oh my goodness. But we've been doing it. We started in our very first show was uh, 2014. Well, it's coming up on 10, 10 year anniversary. Year. A 10 yeah. year anniversary season coming up. Here. Yeah. So it's it's been uh yeah, there's a there's a we've done a lot a lot over the years. So uh the link is up above uh, djntv.com and I didn't even put it right. Uh, forgot the but anyway, djntv.com slash chill. Uh, they're going to be doing a Tuesday night music show Brian J, John, uh, Howie, whoever uh, the guys are tonight. So a, a cast and crew that comes through there on Tuesday nights and they uh, talk music. So join them and have some fun with that. And we'll be back again next week and uh, chat more about DJ gear. Thanks for watching, everyone. Good night.